In this video, you're going to learn how to make payment forms in WordPress without WooCommerce. We're going to use the Jet Form Builder by Crocoblock for this video, and I'm going to show you how to connect your forms to PayPal and Stripe to accept payments. I'm going to show you how to integrate your forms into your Elementor designs and the block editor. So make sure you stick around to the very end because I cover everything step by step. You can also use the timestamps in the description to navigate around the video. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Now let's get started. The process to selling products on your site without WooCommerce is not complicated, but there are a number of steps involved. So I have timestamps in the description down below. You can go to any part of the video you need to. You can jump back and forth. You can bookmark the video and come back tomorrow and then start where you left off. Whatever you need to do, those timestamps are to support you so you can find what you need really quickly. And we're going to start with checking out the tools we're going to be using for this video. There's only one really. That's the Jet Form Builder by Crocoblock. I'm sure you've heard of them because they've been around for a long time in the WordPress community and make great plugins. Jet Form Builder allows us to add awesome functionality way beyond just accepting payments. If you want to know more about Crocoblock, come to this page, check out the add-ons and the documentation because there's so much to do with the Jet Form Builder. We're gonna be using the pro version in this video because we're accepting payments and that's what's required. And we're gonna to connect to PayPal and Stripe using Jet Form Builder. So if you wanna check out Jet Form Builder, there's a link in the description that'll take you to this page and you can find out more about it. And once we have it installed on our site, we're gonna have a new Jet Form Builder option right over here. We can click on that. That'll show us all the forms, which is this first tab. We have an add new section to add new forms. We have settings and add-ons, payments and subscriptions and form records. We'll go through most of these things throughout this video. The most important ones, for this video to get started is the add-ons. So I already installed Stripe and the PayPal recurring payments and the PayPal recurring payments can also do single payments. So don't worry about the recurring part. Although if you wanna do recurring, that's great too. So you'll find Stripe and PayPal in this list down below. Just click on install add-on and it'll be installed and ready to go. Both of these add-ons add a section in the settings. So if we go to settings and then go to payment gateways and turn on payment gateways, and turn on test mode because that's where you should always start is test mode. We have the ability to add a PayPal gateway API and a Stripe gateway API. We're going to do those things right now. I'm going to log into my PayPal account and this is going to be the account that we want the payments to go to. So make sure you pick your correct PayPal account. Click on login, fill in your login details, click on login again. And now that we're in here, you're going to want to click on developer in the top. And I believe only certain PayPal accounts have this. So you're gonna to have to have a business account, which is what I have. Uh, some others might have it as well, but I think it's business accounts that you need for PayPal to have a PayPal developer account as well. Inside of here, we go to apps and credentials. This orange notification is saying we have Sandbox API credentials. Again, another backup just to make sure you're testing things before you actually go live with accepting payments because you want it to work once it's live. So we click on create app to create an app. For this example, we are creating a room booking website and people are going to be able to book rooms or vacations or what have you through our website call this vacation for the app name i'm going to keep it as merchant i'm going to keep this sandbox account right here click on create app once you go live you have to create a new set of api credentials but at that point you'll know it works because you've tested it thoroughly in the in the sandbox and you can just swap out the api credentials by just clicking on this link here to view live credentials then we copy the client id put it in there and we copy the secret key, put that in here, and then click on save. PayPal setup. Now let's set up Stripe. Once you're inside your Stripe account, click on developers, click on API keys, and here's your API key info. You can create a new secret key for your APIs if you want to, or just copy the ones that are here. Paste the public key in there. For the secret key, we have to enter a six digit verification code, or at least I do with my current account setup. Let me click on it to copy it, and then we paste it into here. Save that. And now we have our API keys for both Stripe and PayPal. So now we can go ahead and create a form that we're going to add these to. So let's go to Jet Form Builder and then Add New. I'm going to call this PayPal payment and I'm just going to click on contact form just so we have a something to start with here and this is the form that's pre-populated there's an email field a subject field a message field and a submit button I'm going to delete the subject field I'm going to delete the message field and instead I'm going to create new fields just with a text field 
This one is going to be first name. You can add the label right here or on the right hand side. First name. This field name in here is for internal reference only. This label up here is what you see above the form. The description is something you can put below the form into your first name. The default value is data that's submitted by default even if the person filling out your form does not fill out this field. You can insert default data from information in your WordPress database. You can also enter short codes from JetForm Builder and Crockerblock, pretty handy stuff. I'm gonna duplicate this field and I'm gonna call this second one last name. I'm gonna update the form field name down here to be last underscore name. I'm gonna get rid of this description. For simple forms, it's not required, but for complicated forms, those descriptions are handy. This is the form they're gonna fill out for sending payment to us. The amount of fields you put in here is up to you, but usually less is better when people are sending payment. And we have to define in here how much the payment is. So I'm gonna add a hidden field. I'm gonna put it up there. For the hidden field name, I'm gonna say price. I'm gonna render it in the HTML. For the field value, there's lots of options and I'm gonna choose manual input and I'm gonna enter the dollar value of the price right here. So 199, I'll put for this one. You would obviously put whatever price it is that you wanna put in there. I'm gonna click on save draft to save our work. And the last thing I wanna do for this form is change this button from being submit to book now. Save draft to save our work. Now that the form fields are done, we're gonna set up the payment gateway. So on the right hand side, if we choose jet form, we have a lot of options that we can mess around with. The post submit actions are very important. These are things that happen after someone submits the form. So you can send an email, you can save the form record to your database. If you click on new action, we can add a whole bunch of things that are gonna happen here. I'm going to add redirect to page. I'm gonna choose static page. It let's us choose a page on your site. I created this one, thank you, thank you for your booking. All the rest will just leave blank, click on update. Now when someone fills up this form and pays, they're gonna go to that page. For the send email, which is also important, if you wanna deliver whatever it is they're buying via email, the email too is gonna to be email from submitted form, which is what they would have entered when they filled out the form. You can also create a second email that goes to you as the admin or somebody else via custom email. You can also use carbon copy and blind carbon copy instead of creating multiple emails. So you could just carbon copy yourself as the admin if you want to. Reply to email is almost always the admin email. You can enter a subject line, you can enter the from name, the from email address, the content type, usually plain text is the best thing to do because that's the most deliverable email type. You can add the message body here. You can also attach things to the email. So you can deliver whatever it is via email. So if you were selling a PDF, for example, or an image file of your artwork, you can just attach it right here and it'll be sent to them immediately after they check out. And you can also set this up so the page they're redirected to would contain the stuff they're downloading or getting access to. You'd have to create a different page for every product you sell, but that's not that big of a deal. So there's a bunch of different ways you can deliver whatever it is you're delivering. For the payment gateways, specifically, we've got to click on gateway settings. And I'm gonna choose PayPal checkout, click on edit. We can enter a client ID and secret key here, or we can click on this and use global settings. By allowing you to add them individually for every form, you could technically have every form send payment to a different PayPal account if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but you could. I'm gonna use global settings because that's what we set in the settings earlier. It pulls in the client ID and the secret key. For gateway action, I'm gonna choose pay now. You could also create a subscription. You have to do a little more work for that inside your PayPal account. And Crocoblock has videos about that. I'll link to them in the description down below so you can check that out if you want. I'm gonna choose pay now. I'm gonna click on sync access token. This will check to make sure we can actually access the PayPal account. USD for the currency code. This is probably what you use in most cases. If you don't know what the currency code is for whatever currency you want, just Google currency code for whatever currency and just plop that in here. The amount field is going to be price, which is the hidden field we created earlier, which you can still see on the screen on the left. And that will pull in that price and that's the payment amount. And the rest of the fields you can leave as is. Click on update, click on publish to so save draft because we're more or less done for testing our, our PayPal checkout. We just want to add this to a page. So if we were to view this page as it is, you could have this as your form. You could just link to here and say, fill this out, but it's not enough information. There's no price. There's not even, there's not even information about what you're paying for, but you can add all that. In the Gutenberg editor, you can add whatever blocks you have access to in Gutenberg. So you could have just a checkout page 
and just have it look similar to this and then send people here to buy whatever they're buying. I'm gonna instead add this to an Elementor page. So let's go into the WordPress dashboard. Let's go to pages. And it's gonna be the front page. I'm gonna click on edit with Elementor. There's multiple ways you can add forms to page builders. Elementor has its own widget, the Jet Forms widget. That's the best way to do it inside of Elementor because it allows you access to the styling of the form and the form fields. So I'm gonna throw that in there. It says here, please select form to show. So we choose the form on the left, PayPal payment, and there's our form. And success and failed messages, which will not show up on the front end until we actually use the form, but we have that there. So this one here, we have a 10-day biking trip in Kirk Jabour. I probably butchered that, but that's where the biking trip is. So here I might want to add in some information about how much it costs. So $1.99. So people know what they're buying and what the cost is. And that cost is, of course, the hidden field inside the form that we said earlier. So now if we click on the form, we can go to style over here. We can change all kinds of stuff with the, with the styling. Change the gap before and after. For the label, I might want to make the text size a little bit smaller just to match the website a little better. You can change the font family to match the font family we have. There's more options than most widgets have. And we don't have all these options on our form, like calculated fields. We don't currently have a calculated field on this form or a range field or a repeater or a conditional block. So what they could do, maybe in the future, the Jet Form Builder guys, is they could maybe just show these options conditionally based on what you have on your form, if that's possible. So we have the form in place. Let's publish this page. Let's preview the page. Let's scroll down. Here's our form. And if you have Elementor Pro, you could just have a book now button and have the form pop up in a pop-up if you wanted to. With the free version of Elementor, you can work it just like we have here, just add the form right to the page. I'm just gonna fill out this form, click on book now. It's gonna take us to PayPal, and then you can fill in your PayPal credentials here. This is the customer who'll be doing this, and then log in, or they can also click down here and pay with credit card or Visa debit and fill out this form and check out that way. And up in the top right, we have our price of 199, just as we set in the hidden field. So that's how we set up for PayPal. If we wanted the same form set up for Stripe, all we have to do is exit back to WordPress, go to Jet Form Builder and then Forms. Let's edit this form for Gateway Settings. Choose Stripe Checkout, click on Edit, use Global Settings, use Pay Now, there's no subscription option for Stripe. Click on access token. Let's do the USD for the currency code. The amount is the price field just as before. Leave all the rest as it is. Click on update and save. And now let's just change the name to Stripe payment because now it's Stripe payment, not PayPal payment. And now if we go back to, actually this form is already included on the page. So if we just go back to the page and refresh, now, if we fill out this form and click, it should take us to a Stripe checkout. Click on book now, and there's our Stripe checkout. There's the price, there's the familiar Stripe form, and Bob's your uncle, all done. And if you recall, we use the Jet Forms widget for Elementor to add this form to Elementor, but we also have the option of using the short code. We can just copy this, and we can paste this into the text widget or short code widget of any page builder. So if we wanted to do it with Elementor, we could even not use the JetForms widget, use the short code instead. I don't know why you would. The, the problem is that the JetForms does not have all the styling options if you use the short code. Let's add it to a, a neighboring offering here. Paste the short code in there. And there's our form. And as I mentioned, there is really no styling options at all. You could use custom CSS at this point to style your form if you wanted, but if you want it easy, the Jet Form widget provides all the style options. Other page builders like Divi, for example, will, with the short code, afford you styling options as well, where Elementor doesn't. So depending which page builder you're using, you might have style options, you might not when you use the short code. And if we create a page that's just using the Gutenberg or a block editor. Let's call it book now. Let's add jet form. There it is right there. Please select the form on the right hand side. Stripe payment. Boom. There's our form 
inside a Gutenberg page. You might want to use a much nicer page. Let's use that. Look how beautiful that is. Now we can add the jet form widget right in this nice styled section here. Let's throw it right in there. Please select the form. Let's do that. Stripe payment. There's our form. It messes up the layout of this section, but if you have the appropriate section and you create columns or something, you can very easily include these forms wherever you want on a page and incorporate them into your design really easily. And the best part is you didn't have to use WooCommerce to create these checkouts in these pages. And it's pretty straightforward to create, as you saw. The most important parts are you connect them to PayPal or Stripe and you create a hidden field with the dollar amount that you want to use. And then you have some method of delivering whatever it is that your customer buys. If you handle those few things, like I showed in this video, you'll be accepting payments without WooCommerce in no time flat. So if you want to check out the JetForm Builder plugin, there's a link to it in the description down below. You can also check out the free version in the WordPress repository. And what we just went through in this video only scratches the surface of what JetForm Builder can do. So I encourage you to come to this page, take a look at it, see if it's something you could use in your website, in your business, or for your clients, because it's a great, great form builder. And CrocoBlock has a great history in the WordPress community, and they've been around for a long time and they create great plugins and software so you know they're legit. If you got value from this video, now is a great time to click subscribe and smash the like button to let me know. And next, check out this video up here which shows you how to easily clean a hacked website because that's the last thing you wanna be dealing with. I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.